Your wife doesn't have to become beautiful so you can love her. You have to love her so she can become beautiful again. See, here's the problem is you have a flawed perspective of your wife. That's right. You have cognitive distortions. You have negative self-talk that's attributed to how your wife operates. You look at your wife and you have a heart of resentment. You have a heart of stone. You're not operating in that true Corinthians love. Holding no records of wrongs is not envious, doesn't boast. See, what happens is you feel slighted. And so you hold on to that resentment and you have negative thoughts about your wife. And the enemy comes in and he capitalizes on that. And he gets in your ear about it. You start to feed into that. And what happens is you start to perceive your wife as unattractive. Yeah, you might be physically attracted to her, but she's unattractive to you because the way that she treats you. And as a result, what happens is your view of your wife gets distorted. Brother, nobody goes from a fairy tale marriage to a nightmare marriage without having their part. And as men, you have two choices, either stay or go. And if you're choosing to stay, if you're choosing to stay, my brother, then the only option is to fight for your marriage, to actually pick up the sword. Because I'll tell you right now, brothers in the academy, you have to pry the sword from our hand to stop fighting for the things that we believe in. It's time for you to go to war. It's time for you to take on the mentality of actually fighting for something again. Remember that? Remember what that felt like? Remember the fire in your spirit, the fire in your belly that you had when you were pursuing something with purpose, with meaning, with value? But you lost your edge. Iron sharpens iron. See, wood doesn't sharpen iron. So if you got a bunch of brothers around you who were just yes men validating you and engaging in right self-destructive behaviors, hanging out at the bar with you after work, yeah, I know, I would be mad at your wife too. I don't know what's wrong with feeding into all that. All they're doing is turning up the volume on all the negativity you got going on in here. See, the power move for you, bro, this is the thing about you. You're a powerful guy. You've built big things in your life. You built a big business, a big family. Like you, you created everything you wanted. But here's the deal. You got to the point in your life where you have a choice now. And the choice is what? Stay in victimhood, stay in a state of blaming, which is not you, or pick up your sword and fight. Sometimes, brother, the most Christian thing you can ever do is fight. What did God tell Gideon when he went and fought the Midianites? He said, right, he said, go attack, go attack them. See, the problem is, brother, you're not attacking anymore, you're retreating with a spirit of, of fear. Brother, you're not a coward. You're a powerful warrior. Let me remind you, you're more than a conqueror. If God called you more than a conqueror, then what does that mean? That defeat is not in your DNA. That defeat is not a style that you own and operate in. Put on the full armor of God because this is your time. Stop being around guys who are like wood to, to a dull ax. You need to be around brothers. Iron sharpens iron. You need to be around brothers who can help you do that. That's what the academy is about. It's about brothers helping one another on this journey, all forging forward on a mission to do what? Fight for their family. Fight to be better fathers. Fight to be better husbands. Fight to be better men. And I'll tell you right now, when you look around at the front line and you realize what's going on in the world right now, you realize that you gotta pick a side. Pick a side before you get put on one side and realize that you didn't want to be there. Come join us. Come join us on the front lines.